So I was saying, I'm going to try again. Good uh, morning, good afternoon, everyone. It is July 22nd, 2024. We're in day one, week one, month one of the supported job search phase. So we are just past halfway, um, just past halfway through. So uh, today we have an hour to talk about supported job search phase, but I'd love to know uh, just a couple of reflections, either typing in the chat box or people putting their hands up and just sharing how they enjoyed the week off and how they how they use that time to relax and refresh. So is there, who wants to go first or does anyone want to type in the chat box? Because rest is also rest is also work. So what did you guys get up to? How did you relax? How did you refresh? Sleeping. Abdul Rahman was sleeping. Anyone else? Everyone else is still sleeping, maybe? Nobody else wants to. Actually, I'm curious, so I had not go ahead. But just for everyone else, I'm, uh, you know, as we get ready for the world of work, uh, you have to be able to, only part of work is doing the work. Part of work is being able to get along with your colleagues. And most of you will be working remotely. Um, if you can't respond to sort of a question where somebody's asking, how are you guys doing? And you're sitting silently. What ends up happening is you stop, um, it becomes hard for people to engage with you. Your job as uh, working remotely in a way is more difficult. If you're in person, it's a bit easier because you, know, you just meet and you say hello, you smile. But if you're working remotely, you have to get used to being able to answer questions like this. Even if your answer is, uh, I don't know if you know this word, I'm going to put it in the chat box, inane. <clears throat> It doesn't necessarily have to be inane, but it can be inane. And I'm going to define this for each of you because it's a word that I like. Um, even if your answer doesn't have to be. It's so inane, according to, I believe it's from Oxford, is lacking sense or meaning. Silly. So inane comments could be, I don't know, what, what did you do this weekend? I did nothing or I TikToked or I just uh, doom scrolled or whatever it is that you guys say, it's fine, but you need to have an answer. Okay, so let's go to Hanok and then to Michael. Hi, good morning. Uh, rest was great. Uh, it was necessary. We needed the rest. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly I spent the time watching, uh, catching up on movies that I did not get the chance to see. What did you watch? Uh, I watched The Boys. I don't know if you know it. It's a series like uh, of superheroes, but they're bad people instead of good. Uh, Is it like Marvel? Uh, Is this related to Marvel movie? It's not, but like like the superheroes are like Marvel, but they're like they're bad guys. They're not good guys. Are the Marvel guys good guys? No, yeah, I mean, kind of, I think. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay. Okay. And uh, how's your optimism, Hanok? How's your uh, energy level and your optimism? Uh, my optimism is good. Uh, like, I, I think I've been through a lot, so, like most people over the last 12 weeks. And uh, if I can do that, I think I can do this. What, is, what does that mean? You've been through a lot. Isn't, isn't that why you're here? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think I've ever worked like like this uh, in my life. So I think if I can get through the last 12 weeks, I think I can get through like what's to come. OK. Is there any situation we should relieve your fear of? Is there, I don't know, are you afraid of spiders or something? Should we throw you? Should we get relieve your fear of spiders too? No, I'm not afraid of spiders. I don't know. <laughs> Okay. No, because I, that, I mean, that's one of the comments I love to hear, that if I can handle this, then I can handle anything. Because it's exactly that mindset which uh, separates people at work. Or it's one of the mindsets where people often say their first idea is like, oh my god, I can't do that. I'm not going to do it. You know, Maybe somebody else can take it. And we see over and over that our alumni are successful because they realize, A, it's not scary, and B, they have a playbook with which to address it. So really happy to hear that. And I'm glad that there's a Marvel versus DC uh, flame war happening in the chat box. 
So we've, we've gone down to marvelous for seven-year-old kids. Wonderful. Um, Michael. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the week was good. Uh, up to Wednesday, we were uh, doing our project. So we presented then for the last four days, uh, I was watching documentaries, uh, reading things and watching TikTok. Watching TikTok isn't like documentaries in TikTok. Like, I don't know, aren't they orthogonal to each other? Yeah, that's why. It's did you learn? Much did similar. you learn any single thing watching TikTok? No, <laughs> not one single thing. What? How much time did you spend watching TikTok? Uh, like uh, five hours <laughs> for the yeah. last. Uh, Four days, like well, one hour and 15 minutes, something like that per day. Yeah. <laughs> one of the new ways to get to know somebody is to, I, I'm not a TikTok user, but if you look at someone's YouTube landing page, it's a really good way uh, to get to know someone by showing what the algorithm says. So maybe that should be the new dating thing. You just send screenshots of the other person's YouTube or TikTok or whatever it is, and you can figure out what's there. Because mine, mine is pretty good. I mean, the stuff that's there is, uh, but I'm not going to show it to you guys because I, I'm not dating. But uh, if you want, then you could get to know me by looking at my YouTube page. Uh, anyone else want to share what they were up to in the last week? Uh, Hillary? Yeah, good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, last week, I. I completed Project Wednesday and uh, I started and uh, like the following days I was sleeping mostly, taking a lot of naps on, on the couch. And uh, yeah, it, it, it felt good that time, but also looking at my favorite shows, uh, like um, what were you watching? Some history is uh, some history on, on the on some famous, uh, like the, the, the famous philosophers, like. Um. Uh, uh. It was that time. It was uh, what do you call it? Martin Luther. So, yeah, I was catching up on those history. Uh, and also, I I Martin made my Luther, like the church like, performer. Uh, yeah, no, Martin Luther, the one for protest on the, the um the one who yeah. brought up the reformation. Yeah. 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 Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I've and, been to uh, the city where he actually posted yeah, his reading. Yeah. I've, I've seen that city. It's not too far from yeah, my, those my far from yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also, I also uh, made my favorite dishes. I made mandazi. We call mandazi. Uh, it's, it's it's made out of uh, wheat flour. So, uh, uh, yeah, I made that, and it's like a donut in some way, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's like a donut, but doesn't have a hole in in between. Like it's just. Cut out triangle. Okay. And you eat it, what do you eat mandaze with? Um so, so for me I, I can <laughs> I can do it anything. If I am going to take it up, I take it with like stew. It could be uh, uh potato soup or um uh chicken soup. And also I take it in the morning as well, like breakfast with tea, ginger tea and, and so I use it for any meal. Is it uh, legal to eat mendaza with ugali? <laughs> uh, no, it can't work. Like they are both dry, both carbohydrates. So, like, I don't think you get nutritional value, and you will also probably choke. <laughs> Have you tried it? Uh, yeah, it 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 it's it's so dry. Like you, you can't uh, unless you had something. something. Yeah. Uh, N n no, but um, thank you. Yeah. If you try it, if you try <laughs> it, then it works. I want ten percent, please. I, I, okay, I'll try. Um, uh, I'll try that. Uh, probably today. <laughs> I'll give you feedback tomorrow. I think I can see all the other Kenyans on the call are just saying this is a horrible idea, but yeah. Okay, and how's your energy level, Hillary? How's your enthusiasm? Your enthusiasm. Um, I'm optimistic about the job search phase. Uh, I'm looking forward to to 
uh, sharpening my skills and interviews, especially this part of interviews and and uh, the skills for like the skills for for the application test. Okay, great. Um, let's go to Abraham. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, about last week, uh, the week was actually a bit uh, loaded, but the weekend was good. Uh, I get to meet my niece after five years and my nephew for the very first time. And about uh, the upcoming weeks, yeah, I'm super excited. I think uh, it's going to be uh, good, I guess. Like, uh, I think we can do, I think we can land on jobs. I'm being optimistic here. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And who's next? We have uh, Wandera, please. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, my week has been uh, my, my week was really really good. Uh, it was really chill. Uh, I stayed home most part of it. You know, uh, since uh, I started. I haven't really been going out, but I, I went out on Friday with a, with a friend of mine. He had made some money, so he wanted to show me some love. So we went out. We had a good time. And then, uh, yeah. I what did went you, to how did you spend his money? <laughs> we had a few drinks. He, he, yeah, that, that's his thing. So, we, yeah, we had a few drinks. And, and yeah, we what's, ate as well. What's, what's his drink of choice, or what's your drink of choice? Uh, I, I drink beer only now. Okay. Only beer, and as, yeah. As for which one do you drink? Uh, we. I don't drink. I don't. I don't drink Tasca because I don't know. Tasca is. I don't know. It's. It's not. It's. It's like Smanov. It's like. It's like juice. So, uh, we have a, a brand in Uganda. It's called Nile. I don't know if if anyone has been to Uganda, they would know. It's called Nile. Uh -huh. It's like, I think seven percent alcohol. Okay. So it's yeah, yeah. So yeah. So I do. I drink like three, three, three to five, and then yeah, and that's 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 it for the night. Yeah. And three to so, five yeah. a liter, or what? What is three to five? How big is one? Ah, uh, one. Uh, it, it's like uh, if you if you have seen Tusca cider, the bottle. I I you know I I'm a I'm a staunch adherent to the metric system. Oh oh oh. oh so it's like. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the the liters, but <laughs> okay, that's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I, I should actually check this out, so, and, and I see how many liters they are. Yeah. So yeah, I did that, and then I watched uh, I watched a few series. Um, I watched uh, Sausage Party. There's a series now. I don't know. I don't even know if I watched Sausage Party. It's a movie or food. So there's a series. I watched that as well. Uh, I, I watched a bit of anime. <laughs> Okay. I've been watching anime. I, I watched um, Demon Slayer. So yeah, I haven't I haven't watched the new se this new season. So I watched I watched that, and then yeah, I was catching up on other series as well. Yeah, I also watched Power Book Two. If anyone has watched that, so so I I, I haven't watched the new the new five, the new five episodes. So I watched that as well. Yeah. So I've been resting. I'm well rested and very optimistic about the next three months as well. OK, wonderful. So let's wrap up with Mr. And then I have a couple of comments uh, that I wanted to share. And I think the others, there'll be others uh, making comments as well, but a couple of comments that I want to share. So let's wrap up with Mr., please. Uh, hello. Uh, so uh, last week was very good for me. It was like a very amazing week because uh, I got my first uh, interview. Uh, so I was told that I, I got recommended from, I don't know who that person exactly is. I was told I was recommended by Mahalit. Uh, and yeah, which company, I got which that. Role? Which company, which role? It was a local company uh, for ML engineering, I guess the role. They didn't make it uh, specific, but they told us it was AI related. Uh, yeah. It's called JSI. Okay. So, um, went there and uh, I took the taste. It was lit code and there were three questions, but they were really, really difficult. They were hard to label. Uh, after that, there was like an interview for us to tell them about how uh, we 
plan to solve the questions or how we solve them. So the interview was really good, but uh, I don't think I have like write the exact code to solve the questions. However, uh, yeah, it was like really amazing for me because I felt like the past, the hard work that I put in the past 12 weeks have already started to pay me. And like, I'm really happy about that because uh, it gave me uh, motivation and, and excitement. Also, I'm very feeling, I'm feeling very optimistic about the job searching phase because I am feeling recognized uh, starting from now. So like, yeah, I, it was really a good week for me. I'm really happy to hear that. And I think that that should become more normal. I'd like to thank you for sharing that news openly. One of the mindset changes that we want to go through is that uh, we struggle in the past. We have struggled in the past, and I believe we may struggle with core P in people being willing to share good news and viewing that not as showing off, but rather as um, we believe and we've seen, we're not just believing it out of faith, but based on evidence that the as the cohort progresses, so does uh, each and every one of you. So the fact that Mr. got an interview is a sign that each of you is ready um, to be ready for interviews and to do well. So it, even if it was a difficult lead code question, um, I think that it's often, yeah, it's a sign that everyone is making progress. And uh, I would like to encourage every single one of you to share as much information uh, about interviews, about callbacks, if any one person gets even a, a message back from a recruiter, let's share that. We don't have to uh, exaggerate it, but let's share that in this uh, sense of we're working together on a, on a joint project. So, yeah. Uh, Abraham, do you have something new or is it still the hand from before? Uh, I, I have something new. Okay. I think uh, I have also got that the same opportunity as Mr. for that. I was an exam or uh, I don't know. How, how, how did yeah, you I also went, I also, uh, it was okay, I guess, but I think it needs more efforts. The questions were a bit challenging, but I think it's a good sign, I guess, like, to prepare more. Excellent. Very happy to hear that. So I believe, so I'm going to present a couple of slides and I, um, yeah, just give me a second here. Da, 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 da. So I don't have a lot to say today. I think that uh, what I have to share is very, uh, so it, there's not a lot to say in terms of content. I'd, I'd like to have a discussion. I think others, um, Yevabel, Abdul Hamid, also have other things to share. Um, but I wanted to share a couple of things about the intensive job search phase. Um, so why are we here? And I would like to have this more as a discussion, of course. So why are we here? Um, we didn't have the supported job search phase when we started. We didn't have it until uh, earlier this year was the first time we had a formal supported job search phase. We added it informally at the end of 2022 in response to uh, our feeling that there was a lot of good people uh, who obviously had done the training, but they needed a little bit more help in completing the transition into work. And we also felt that people would start to spin their wheels. So um, we believe that most of you here have tried to learn data science, machine learning, not data science, sorry, machine learning, data engineering, generative AI on your own. Um, but that efficiency goes down quite a lot when uh, you may not be part of a system and you're doing it yourself. Uh, and we also felt and we saw that people were getting jobs, but um, one of the challenges uh, we have is trying to encourage people not to settle for the job which is right in front of them or go back to the role that they were working on before, but how do we improve the quality of job placements and to improve the speed of job placements. So we decided um, after doing a three month long experiment um, that we would launch the supported job search phase again to help you transition into work to make sure that you're using your energy in an efficient way. Um, and to improve the speed and quality of job placement. So the way I look at it is very simple. We were part of an accelerator program and somebody had said, as one of the lecturers who was there, um, said something which I liked because it was really simple. And if it's not simple, then I get confused. 
but I like simple things. And the simple thing was uh, that this person said was, what is the algorithm? Uh, what is the equation? Not the algorithm. What is the equation that underlines your success? Uh, and so I believe for the supported job search phase, at the end, your goal is to get an offer. Now, an offer means that the company has decided that they want to hire you, and the offer will be in writing. It'll include a job. It'll include at least a job title. It'll include the term of the role, meaning how long is it? Is it a two-month role? Is it an unlimited role, meaning that you know, there's no end date to it? Is it a contract role? Is it a remote? It'll include all of those details, and it'll also include how much you're earning. So I believe that uh, that offer rate is a function of the number of interviews that you get times the interview success rate. So if you are getting, if your interview success rate is 100%, then the number of offers that you get will equal uh, the number of interviews that you get. So if we break this down, uh, and so you guys can always put your hands up because I'd like to have a discussion or an argument or whatever it is uh, about these points. Uh, the number of interviews is very straightforward. I would say uh, it's the quantity of applications, again, times uh, a percentage of that job resulting in an interview. Now, this is a simplification because there's a lot happening uh, underneath that um, because an interview is usually a multi-stage thing. Um, I believe you'll be getting the careers manual, manual if you haven't gotten it already, but the typical interview is usually five, six, uh, five or six stages, if not more. It could be a bit more, it could be a bit less, but it's in that range from you applying to you actually getting an offer. You should be expecting five or six different stages. So if we're really, really, really specific, then it's the likelihood of you passing each and every one of those stages of the interview. Now, some stages are easier and harder than others, depending on the person. There's usually two main uh, three main types of thing uh, things that they'll be looking for. One is career skills. The second is uh, technical skills. And the third is a cultural fit. Um, and I think for the majority of you in the roles that we're preparing you for, it's going to be the technical uh, skills that are going to be, that's going to be the most uh, determining factor. So the quantity of applications times the likelihood of each of those uh, jobs resulting in an interview. And I think this is where we're trialing out a new approach um, as part of this supported job search phase. And the goal here is to improve, as always, the goal is to improve the number of interviews and how do we do that? A, by increasing the quantity of applications and B, by increasing the likelihood of each and every one of those applications resulting in an interview. Now, in the past, this, num this percentage, um, and I think I may have asked you guys this before, um, maybe I haven't, but I would like to ask each of you just to put in the chat, the chat box, um, what do you think the historical percentage of uh, applications that results in an interview? Is it uh, two applications results in one interview, meaning 50%? Is it one in 10? So 10 applications results in one interview. So give it to us as a percentage. I would like to see it in the chat box. One in 50, that's not a percentage, but okay, we can do the math. So 2%, 5%, 2%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%. Okay, so the the person that I think is uh, from the numbers that I'm seeing there, uh, the person who is furthest away is Javez, I believe. Um, and the person who is closest is Abu Bakr. So 0.5% means you're looking at about 200 applications. This is not you. We have been looking at about 200 applications for a single interview. That's what we've seen in the past. And so the team has put, to, put a lot of work into uh, trying to improve the quality of targeting and trying to improve the quality of materials uh, to help with that. But historically speaking, uh, we have been looking in the 200 to 1 range. Now, that depends on how carefully people are sorting through 
applications. It depends on the market a little bit. The market right now for generative AI shows that there is a big gap in terms of talent. But historically, we've been seeing about 0.5%. So I'm just going to pause there and see if there's any uh, reflections on that. Does anyone want to make a comment? Uh, anyone from the team? Yabavel, I see you here as well. Do you want to add something? I mean, I think this is basically what, what you said, so nothing to add. But yeah, we are, we know that. And, you know, as data scientists, we take that number, we try to improve. And that improvement means interventions. And we're doing some interventions. We, we selected the interventions based on hypothesis, just like you guys were doing. And hopefully this will improve. But there's no guarantee. But let's see. We'll we'll and and I think that the first part um, is the commitment that we have that everyone should get a job and and that's you know the most important thing. And second is that we believe that you will deliver value, but you might not believe it yourself that one, and that has a lot more consequence than just the the word, because if you don't believe it, then you will very much become the friction for yourself for your own success so hopefully that as we go on if you know you are also somehow like the process if you trust on the process um and do your best and we we do our best to give you value and hopefully that the combination of this will improve probably uh, but otherwise yeah the number we have so far is that one and i think there are lots of odds against us including that the location we are in like being in Africa doesn't usually have a, a good name in that in that regard. If we were running or doing football, would have had a much better luck in terms of like psychological friction. Um, but here, yeah, so there are lots of odds, but um, from the past as well, most people get a job. So that's also a data that we really use. So it's not like just wishes. It's we know that 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 happens, but it happens in a very sometimes unpredictable or un, 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 unsettled in a kind of unfixed way. So that means we do all our best and that best usually translates into 95% placement into jobs, so, which is a good, a good number and probably one of, I haven't seen that number in any other um, trainings um, that are located in Africa. So yeah, I say it a lot, but uh, that's, that's my addition. Thanks. Anyone else, any uh, one from the group that wants to add, have any questions? Michael, go ahead. Okay, so in the technical skill, uh, in the past week, I, I was trying to search the jobs and what the requirements are. So uh, my question is like, how, how, how deep can we get, or can we get to the concepts and the technical skill, for example, I was uh, I I choose machine learning in as a, a career path. So there are many different skills on those and different concepts. So understanding a con the concept is good, but applying it in uh, in an, uh, projects or like writing a code with that or something like that may take many times. So how can how deep should we go the concepts and the projects? So I don't, <clears throat> I don't fully understand the question. Um, I think what I can say is that one, one of the, what should I say here? You're being hired at a, uh, for a junior level job. So they're not expecting that a company is unlikely to expect that when you start that you are able to uh, design the architecture for a new system. They're also unlikely to expect you to alone develop a new feature com completely by yourself. A more typical role for each of you would be joining an existing team and making uh, a contribution in one of the following ways. That way it could be maintaining an existing feature, it could be doing some exploratory testing to see if technology A or feature B could be useful. So I think we have to be realistic and I think this is where each of your understandings of the job uh, market will develop. 
you are not going, you are unlikely to be hired to architect a new system. You're good, you're probably going to be joining a team and they want you to be able to make a contribution. So what does that mean? Uh, to answer your, more, your question more specifically, more importantly, I believe, so it's important that you know you have technical skills. Um, two things that are more important than that, I believe, because I don't know if you can adjust your technical skills dramatically uh, within the next couple of weeks. What you can adjust dramatically is your understanding of the entire landscape. So where do the technical skills that you have fit into the overall landscape of technical skills? So if you understand that, and I'm going to use the example of uh, a platform like Spark or Hadoop, even if you don't know how to use it in an expert way, if you know what it does and you know how it could be useful, or if you've never used DBT, but uh, you have an experience with a competitor product or you know why it's useful, or you haven't used Snowflake, but you know where it fits into the overall ecosystem. That type of knowledge is important and valuable and is often missing uh, from people who are in the technical field. So that's one. The second is having an understanding of the limits of your knowledge. So we had one of our trainees who um, accepted an A, an internship, B, a four week long project, and C, he was working alone, and D, he, was, uh, he had agreed to build a complete buy now, pay later system for a company by himself in four weeks as an intern, which is completely unrealistic. And so I think that's an example of uh, not knowing what you're actually able to do and what you're not able to do. Most employers are, very, are, are not expecting uh, each of you guys to be uh, the savior or the world beater or to be Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg. They want a person who's going to join the team, who's going to meet or exceed their expectations. He or she is going to get along with the team and they're going to stay for a long time. So having an understanding, I, you don't need to be, don't make the mistake, I would say, of uh, expecting that you need to be able to do every single thing uh, in the world to be able to be successful in this space. I think that's uh, unlikely to work. I would say it's much more important to have an understanding, to be able to do a lot, to have the right mindset, to be able to communicate what it is that you can do, to understand what's happening uh, out there on the landscape and the rest of the technology landscape, and then to focus in on the specific subfield that you want to get into and to become very good and very well-versed in that uh, subset. So that would be my answer uh, back to you, Michael. So I would say decide uh, what you're going to focus in on and uh, broaden your understanding of what, uh, or make sure you have a good understanding of what the landscape looks like and practice speaking about what it is that you're not able to do because that's that's expected no there's no person in the world who's able to do everything especially not people with uh, a lot less experience and this is where um, one of the best determinants of experience i believe when i talk to different people is experienced people know what they can't do inexperienced people are like yeah no problem i'll get that done can you give me two days and in my head, I'm thinking, you know, maybe that's a two year long project and the inexperienced person's like, does, doesn't even know that it's impossible. So I hope that answers your question, Michael uh, Wondera. I want to ask, you spoke about uh, the statistic of uh, one, in one in 200 gets, gets you an offer. So uh, based on that analogy, is it the more, like okay if let's say someone 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 does 500 applications does that does that increase the number of offers you get i believe so or oh okay but 500 is a lot right and so then one has to we have to think about that carefully is that so just sending out 500 uh so there's a, there's a couple of things behind that just hitting that 500 number let's say we just go on linkedin and use easy apply and just you know, sort of turbo through 500 in a day, your, your hit rate is going to become a lot lower because you're also looking for a certain type of, the company has to fit, the job has to fit. We're now out in the real world and you can't manufacture a job. The employer has to want, uh, the employer has to want to hire you and sometimes that takes a little bit of time. So I think spreading that out over a longer period of time, making sure that every application makes sense going through the interviews and actually thinking about 
uh, the questions that were asked and being honest with yourself about where do I need to improve on that. And uh, I think patience is a big one. Um, learning that this is not going to be, um, it's not going to be a short term thing. We are right now trying to help you jump from uh, where you were before up to a new level. And I think everyone, everyone gets it when it comes to technology. Each of you uh, came because I think you realized that just doing one or two weeks of a YouTube course probably wouldn't get you to the level that uh, you wanted to get to. And you were willing to invest three months of hard technical training. Now, what we're saying is that the job search process is also hard. It's hard in a different way. But do not lose your patience. Do not get frustrated. You're going to have to keep up with it, and we're going to help you. But um, you know, just 500 applications, which are completely unrelated to anything, is not necessarily going to help you. I would say uh, X number of good applications, and I'm not going to say what that X is. I, I, historically, it was about 0.5%. X number of good applications is important. And so Johannes asked, quant quality or quantity? Unfortunately, it has to be both. Uh, it's not one or the other, it's quality and quantity. And when it comes to interviews, um, it's not only about getting the interview. It's about converting that interview into an offer. Because just having an interview, it's fine, but unless you turn that into an offer, which leads to employment, which is why we're here, uh, it's not going to help you. And so in our experience, it is not technical skill plus communication skill but it's technical skill times communication skill. So if you are the most technically competent person who is out there, but you're not able to speak in a fluent and a confident manner, uh, your likelihood of getting an offer is reduced. So you need to have both. You need, that, you need to have the technical skill as well as the communication skills. Now for some jobs, if you can, you can make a difference by, uh, if you're super motivated to get that particular job or you're super motivated to get a job uh, overall, that can help you. So that maybe that means that you work your network, you reach out to somebody, um, you do extra work, you don't just spend, do the minimum required on the technical challenge, but you go further. There's always stuff you can do, uh, which is extra to convert that, to increase your chance of converting that interview into an offer. Now, in our experience, that's you know you only have a limited amount of time and energy, and so if you take your uh, technical challenge and you convert that into, you know, instead of uh, one week, if you convert that into spending sixteen hours a day for one week, you can't do that for every interview because you're just going to exhaust yourself. So you should probably make sure it's for the right sort of job. So in summary, the equation that uh, how how I understand it is we're here to get you a job offer, and it's a function of two simple things. Um, one is the number of interviews, and the second is the interview success rate. Those multiplied by each other, and the number of interviews is described below. The interview success rate is described below. None of these are magical, but it does mean that we need to be applying for jobs and working at it in a really regular and reliable way and applying for the right jobs and being patient because even if you apply for a job at a company that we know, in all likelihood, it's going to take three to four weeks before anything happens. Companies are slow. And then it's really about preparing for the interview. And I want every single person to go into every single interview, not only prepared from a technical perspective, but being able to tell your story in a way that they will understand it. So we have to make sure and we will prepare with you for every single interview, making sure that you're telling your story in the right way. And just as Yevabel said, we've seen that this system applied over a longer period of time, it does work. People do get jobs. Now, some people will get uh, jobs a little bit faster, and some people will get jobs um, maybe that are higher in terms of salary. But in the long run, these things average each other out. And I think one of the most important things for each of you to do is, um, is to keep going. So what lessons have we learned? Um, you're less than halfway there. I know that might sound dramatic, and I don't know, it's, it's just an estimate. Uh, I don't know if you're halfway there. You could be at 30%, you could be at uh, 49%. I don't know if anyone's at 51%, so those people have an interview. That's great, that's good progress. But uh, please don't make the mistake of thinking that you're done, and now you're just going to 
wait and get an offer. Uh, unfortunately, there is no magic. Um, we will not be bringing you offers for you to sign. Um, we are a training organization and we are here to help you and support you and to make sure that you get the work done or to encourage you to get that work done. But just like through the technical training phase, you have to get the work done. Uh, the bad news is for those of you who, um, what's the right word here, who kind of uh, shimmied your way through the technical training phase, um, interviews are pretty good. Uh, those things probably find themselves out in an interview. So you're going to have to put the work in. So in my opinion, you're less than halfway there. Numbers and effort, they still matter. Um, but staying in the game matters more. So whatever it is that you do, however many job applications you apply for, however many interviews you get, uh, until you get the offer, whatever it is that you need to do to stay in the game and stay and be ready for this process to take months, and uh, in some cases up to a year, then that's the process that you need to adopt. And if that means that you need to say, Saturdays, Sundays, I'm not doing anything because I have to go and meet friends and stay optimistic. If you need to uh, become more religious, if you need, whatever it is that you need to do to stay in the game, you should start thinking about how to do that because that's important during the supported job search phase, but it's also important once you start working. So staying in the game is uh, super important. And I've, I was looking a little bit, I didn't put as much time as I should have, but for the, there's a couple of frameworks that I would like to think about to describe this. And I was actually looking for like a comic and I had seen one, um, but I couldn't find it just before uh, this presentation. I read something last week and I think uh, you guys might've heard of Naval. He's one of these um, guys from Silicon Valley who says stuff that people like. I've posted a link there. And uh, what he's basically saying is you need to be good at uh, two different things. You have to be good at learning to build something, and you have to be good at learning to sell something. If you can build something, and we worked for the last three months on teaching you how to build, great, you're halfway there. Now you need to know how to sell something, and that's something that you need to be able to sell, in this case, is selling yourself, um, selling your skills, selling why you would be a good part of the team, how you will add value. Um, that's uh, also important, and I would say it's not, uh, it's not less important than the other one. So I'm going to just stop there and see if there's any comments or questions in the, in the spirit of this becoming uh, more of a discussion. One there? You turned uh, something about um, uh, some people, some people will get jobs are earlier than others and others will not necessarily get jobs at the same time and then there's a there's a there's a the conversation about money like getting uh, getting paid more than others so mm -hmm. when we're looking at the jobs and the offers in case like you get other inter the interviews or the should you should one look at uh, getting an opportunity to just get like if let's say that the, 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 you fit into the company the culture but the pay is not right. It's not the, the one you would like. It's just better to just go for that job or wait for another job where that fits, the culture fits, you you have the offer and the, the, pay is, the pay is also good. So should you look at money or just the opportunity to get into a job as well? I would be, I would be optimizing two to five years out. So you guys are now, if we take a step back from the pain that you've experienced, uh, over the last three months and uh, some of the difficulties that you will face. Let's take a step back and evaluate where we are. You guys are highly skilled people in an in-demand career field. So these sorts of uh, perturbations in the short term should, uh, they're real, but I think the real value that uh, is out there to be unlocked <clears throat> is significant. And that real value is probably going to start manifesting itself in the two to four year time frame. So your first job will be a step, but it's the two to four year time frame where you guys will really start to fly, where you really will look back and you're uh, doing interesting. You know, for, it might be right away, but what we've seen is it's that time frame where things really start to that J curve where you're going up like this, and then it really starts going up is in about the two to four year time. So my question to you 
back to you uh, will always be, is this job a good one to put yourself on the right on the right trajectory to maximize where you're going to be in the two to four year time frame? Now, the answer to that will depend on a few things, but it's usually a function of um, what will you be learning at that job? Um, what sort of a company is it? And the third thing, which is a little bit harder for you to control, but uh, you should still look into, is what sort of a team are you gonna be working with? So those are usually things that you can uh, use to inform yourself. But I would say that I would much rather that each and every one of you takes a job which is going to maximize your returns two to four years in the future. So it's a, it's a bit of a roundabout, uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but if it's a job that doesn't pay well, that well, but it's sufficient, and it also depends on how much money you guys need to get. I, each of your circumstances will be different. Um, but if it can cover your basic needs and you're working with a good team with new technologies and you're learning in a good way, um, I would recommend that job over a well-paying dead-end job because the well-paying dead-end job is still going to be a dead-end in five years, whereas that growth job is going to be teaching you, you're going to be learning, you're going to be taking up responsibility. That's, I think, a better place to be. But it, it, there's a lot of factors at play, and that's where we need to move to uh, individual answers because it's too, I don't know, it, it depends. Maybe we've had situations where somebody has to support their entire family, so they need to earn good money right away. We have other people who, you know, the money that they're earning is really just for going out on the weekends and they can live at home and eat at home, so it doesn't matter that much. So it depends. Does that answer your question, Wonder? Yes, sir. It does. Okay. okay. So, anyone else? Any thoughts, any reflections? Have, have I been the bearer of bad news? Because I think my, I'm actually very optimistic, um, but I just want to start this, and I think we'll be hearing this over the next little while. It's not, uh, we're not graduating yet. We're just entering a new phase of a different type of work. But this is where things get uh, things get real, at least for me. Tomeskin? Yeah, uh, good afternoon. And, uh, so does experience matters? I mean, uh, uh, if you find uh, internal positions related to the AI or machine learning jobs based on our choosing, uh, if uh, internships, have come to our way. Is it encouraged to to go on it? And does the experience, the, this kind of experience, uh, have some additional? To, so I think for the ex selection, for the experience always helps, right? People like to invest in safe bets, and the fact that you've worked before, be it an internship or uh, a regular job, even if it's a little bit unrelated, is uh, it, it reduces risk. So I think we have to handle it on a case-by-case -case basis. What I've often told people is if you get the opportunity for a good internship um, and you can keep it up while you're still applying for jobs, then what are you losing if you're gaining experience while you're still applying for jobs? You're not really losing anything. Maybe it means you have to work hard. And if you can fit that work into your schedule, then you should probably do it. But if the internship is really just you sitting there and getting coffee and not learning anything, it really has to be about that learning. Um, and the learning, I mean, there's, so I have, I have lots to say, so I'm not going to say everything now, but that learning is not only doing the project in a week, but it's also learning how, and getting familiar and comfortable with how companies develop and deploy software, how do they communicate, how do they think about things that maybe we haven't spent as much time thinking about including efficiency of uh, efficiency of operation, um, efficiency of uh, cost efficiency, co cost optimization, 
testing, building APIs, um, those things you get a little bit through work experience. So let's handle them on a case by case basis. But if you find an internship, even if it's unpaid, if they're willing to treat you well, then I would consider it. So Johannes, I think this is a, Johannes asks, how do we break the learning cycle? Especially in our field, there are a lot of things to learn and how do we know if we're good enough for a job? Um, I think that the technology that we're gonna be, you will be using, uh, which is now integrated with the 10X learning platform, should be helping on that. Um, this is why the tutors are also here to help answer those questions. Um, but I think that general question of how do you know if you're good enough for a job, it's, uh, I can't give you a clear answer, but I think this is one of the things that we're also, we've also built into this system is we want you to develop a sense of the market. This is where, when we talked about selling, you can't, uh, if you are selling uh, a Mercedes or a Rolls Royce or a very expensive car, you have to develop that sense of where am I going to be selling this? Am I going to be going to the people standing at the bus stop and saying, you know, do you want to buy my Mercedes? Or should I be, where should, who's the right market for my skills and how does it fit? That we can help you with, but remember that you are going to become the architect of your own career. And this next three months is a chance for you to make sure that you can answer that question with confidence. One thing that I do want to say is I want you to change your mindset uh, in terms of why you're being hired. And I think we've covered this, but remember that you are being hired and they're going to pay you $1 because you are going to do work that's going to earn the company a multiple of that. So that company is going to be earning $3, $5, $50 on the backs of the work that you do. So they're not doing you a favor. They're not hiring you because you're good looking or you're funny. They're hiring you because you're able to deliver at a low risk and for a long term um, the work that they're asking you to do. So having a good understanding of what you're actually able to do and what the market is actually looking for, that's, I would, Naval would call that selling. Uh, I think that's product market fit or it's developing a sensitivity to what the market uh, is asking for. So there's no, there's no really short answer to that but it is eminently doable and you guys have access to a huge amount of information we have the team that's here to help you so i think you guys are probably really well placed to do that any other questions So for today, I think the how we're gonna talk about uh, afterwards, but this is really more a chance to think a little bit about the, not even the why, but the, the what are we trying to do? And so just to summarize, because there don't seem to be a lot of questions, so I think maybe we've covered either uh, too much material or it's been perfectly covered, which I don't believe. Um, I think the whole, I, the whole reason that we're here as an organization is to create a pipeline to help you guys get jobs. We're not here for certificates, we're here for jobs. Now, the technical skills that you've learned have been uh, carefully thought through and they've been developed to respond to whatever is uh, as close as possible to the leading edge as we could manage uh, in terms of what industry is looking for. So, that's, uh, that's one part of what has to be done. You've also picked up communication skills uh, and the ability to frame the work that you've been able to do and to make sure that you can present that, be it slides or reports, you can work well with other people, you've learned remote work tools, you've learned cloud computing tools, you've picked up a whole lot and that's great and now you're halfway done. And now the next three months, we're going to be working with you to make sure that you don't just take these skills that you have and sit at home and say, look, I don't know what to do, I'm a bit overwhelmed. We are going to work with you to uh, make sure that you apply for the right jobs in a sufficient number um, and, in, and you have prepared for each interview such that your chances of getting an interview are increased. Now, just like we can't force you to code, we can't force you to think. We can't force you to be honest with yourself about your shortcomings. We can't force you to be, uh, to actually prepare for an interview. We can encourage and we can support and we believe that if you follow our system, we've seen that it works, but uh, our job is really just uh, to provide that framework 
within which we have seen success. And we believe that if you do that and you stay patient, um, it's the likelihood of you, of everyone here getting a job at the end of, or getting an offer at the end of the next three months. We're not, three months is not the right time frame. You need to be thinking nine months, 12 months. That's how long it could take because the job market is very, very, very slow moving. But once you're able to make that jump and keep that job, that's where that transformation happens. So that's, yeah, this is the next phase on this long journey. So I'll stop and I'll hand over to see if anyone else on the team has any comments to make. If there's any questions from the group. All right, uh, thank you so much, Arun. This was uh, very eye-opening and um, really good intro to this phase in what we can expect and what kind of mindset we should be carrying in this three months journey and even beyond. So thank you so much. Uh, for the rest of the sessions today, we have uh, one session in one hour. Uh, yeah, it's going to be starting in one hour, 11.30, AM UTC, and we will go. We'll be doing SGS onboarding and also talking about corporate alignment. So, see you, everyone. If you don't have any questions, we can wrap up the, the session and uh, meet you in one hour. You guys can also write if you have questions. You can also write in Slack in the uh, SGS Month One um, channel. And if you want to answer from me particularly, you can tag me. Absolutely. All right. Thank so, you, yeah, thank you, everyone.